All right, so what you just witnessed right now, uh, it wasn't me uh, actually playing the snake game. It was the computer uh, who learned by itself how to learn uh, the classical snake game. And this uh, was made possible thanks to, th uh, to something called artificial uh, intelligence. So before, before I start explaining the code behind it and how I made it all work, uh, I just wanted to let you know uh, that um, I used the same code um, that I featured on my YouTube channel. So if you go on my YouTube channel, and here you go on DL Academy, and then, um, oh yeah, make sure to subscribe and uh, like the videos, of course. Uh, you go on the playlist and you will find here Game Programming 101, and I'll explain, I explain in details how to create uh, the snake game. Uh, we used Pi, uh, Pi, Pi game uh, as, as the main module. All right, so, so let me, let me uh, try and explain here. Uh, so here's the main file. I'll start with the snake.py. So I just um, put all the classes together. So here we have the snake head, we have the food, uh, we have the tail. I just put them all in the same document. Uh, and um, I didn't make much changes here, except that I changed the width and the height to be both uh, the same. I believe I put the, uh, I set them to be 720. 720, uh, it must be down there. I also changed here the read input function. Uh, so basically now here it says key equals zero or one. So, so, so zero means uh, left one means right two means up and three means down this is so that it's compatible with with uh, the AI because the AI here returns like for actions it returns zero one two and three so uh, it's handy if here it reads um, zero one and two and three instead of like the pie game uh, key input so that's a little change uh, that I made to make it compatible with uh, the AI here it's all the same 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 all right so here it is as I said I set the screen width and screen height both to be 720 all right so here we initialize the display create the snake head snake food and I changed so here uh, I had all this code was inside the while loop I created a step function so that I could use it here uh, so this is the main file and the step function here um, which returns the observation, reward, done, and info. So before I start explaining what I did here, let me just tr uh, try and explain how uh, the model, the, the DeepQ learning model works. So DQN, it stands for Deep Q Learning, and it's a type of reinforcement learning. And so what it does is uh, it, it outputs Q values and these Q values, basically, depending on the state you give them, return the action that will result um, in you, in the agent, gaining the maximum reward. Uh, and the agent is just like, uh, it controls, it controls like, um, for here, it controls our snake in our example. It controls the, the main character. And it, there is a, uh, a deep neural network attached to it uh, in order to make the decisions. So, so here, um, let's go back to uh, main.py. Um, this I'll explain in a little bit. Action space is four because we have four possible actions, which are right, left, up, and down. This is a learning rate. How means how fast the, we want the neural network to start uh, to learn. Number of games, I've put it to 50,000, you can change this. And here number of steps is a thousand. So basically I say, uh, if you go beyond a thousand step, just reset the game so that like, for example, we're not stuck in a loophole or anything like that. Here I create the agent. I said gamma to 0 0.99, so these are parameters. And then uh, input dimensions, number of actions, which is our action space, which is four. And here uh, input dims is our observation space which is 31 i'll explain this number in a little bit and the batch size is 64 so basically after every 64 frame uh you train the neural network so we so basically the neural network isn't trained like on a simple frame it's trained on a bunch of frames so that it has like a more global idea of what's going on 
Here I have an empty list to keep uh, the score and an empty list to keep our Epsilon history. Now I loop through all the number of games, which is 50,000. And then here I create uh, a first observation list. And then here I loop through all the steps, which are uh, supposedly a thousand. And then here, this is just, uh, for example, if I want to click on the X, let me just show you, for example, if I want to click on this X right here, it works. Um, it's just looping through the events and quitting. Otherwise, it's just going to bug. All right, so here, uh, first what we do in the for loop is we determine what's the action. And this, we use our agent and a function that we created, which is called choose action based on the observation. And then uh, after that, we do snake.step. So we take an action here. Uh, this is um, 25 because I decided to give it, um, like the snake head has a field of vision of five by five. So, so, so basically like, like you have the snake at the middle and it can see the objects are uh, two units to the left, two units to the right, two units up and two units down. Uh, which means that in total, like it has a field of vision of a five by five square surrounding the head. This observation underscore is the new observation. Uh, after we took the uh, step, we also get a reward after taking the step. Done means if the game is over, if we lost or no, and info is pretty irrelevant. And then after that, we increase the score. We store the transition into our agent. I'll show you this function in a little bit. And after that, we say that the, uh, the, the, um, the current observation equals the new observation. So, so basically we always have like, uh, the current observation and the observation, uh, before that. And then we use the agent.learn, which I'll also show you in a little bit. But if before we delve into the neural network, I want to show you the snake.step action. It's pretty much almost the same thing as before, except here, um, uh, there's a little some things that I changed here. We have uh, we're, we're initializing the new observation reward done and for the new observation is equal to this So basically it's a bunch of zeros for I and range and then here observation space This is actually like the 25 that I showed you from before plus 6 which is equal to 31 which is here uh, the same as this one uh, which we input into our agent, so everything uh, is the same everywhere. And here, uh, why I do this is because I want six um, observations, which are, uh, let me just come down to show you here. So basically, I wanted um, like a bunch of information regarding like the observation uh, space uh, is similar to, um, it's similar to uh, the state. Uh, observation space and state are kind of like synonyms. They pretty much mean the same thing. And here, um, this is 25 because, uh, for example, um, let me just open up paint. Maybe it's going to be easier to explain that way. And, uh, say, say we have like, like this one, uh, all right, so I hope this makes sense. So basically, um, so basically the snake head is here, and uh, I give it a field of vision that is uh, a five by five. So here it's five, and here it's five, and then I, I put this into a list. So whenever there's anything like this, it's a zero. I need nothing. It's a zero. So all right, so it becomes a zero, and let's say, let's say here like. Uh, the snake, uh, here there's a tail, all right? Or, or let's say here there's a tail, like this, There here there's a tail. The tail we'll call it T, and here there's a tail T. Here it will actually put a one, because there's something. And then again. All right, so um, the reason why uh, I did it this way uh, meaning that I kept a track of uh, whatever is around the snake head is to prevent the snake head from uh, going into a loophole where it cannot um, uh, escape. Uh, for example, let's say like uh, if I just give it uh, the position 
at its left, so here if it's empty, and the position, for example, like just around it, like this, if I just give it like a vision of one from the right, one from the left, one from the front, um, let's say like the snake goes this direction, and then it turns, and then it goes like this, comes back like this and then here uh, there's literally no escape because it didn't know that um, for example uh, here it 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 it, it um, trapped itself so by giving it a bigger field of vision uh, the AI will eventually learn to uh, prevent this from happening all right so let's get back to the code uh, and try and understand this um so yeah so here is pretty much all the same except for a reward i give it a reward of 10 points if it eats uh, the fruit and a reward of neg negative three if it collides uh with itself same thing here and a reward of negative one if it goes uh if it touches the wall same thing here so this is for the x so the right and left walls and this is for the top and bottom walls reward of minus one uh, this is the same code, same code here. All right, so here it's a bit different. Uh, I get the X and the Y of the snake head and I divide it by the screen width. So this is just to convert the value from 720 from a value from zero to one. This works better uh, with neural, ne uh, neural networks in general. And then here, all right, so the first observation, I subtract uh, the head X with the food X. So basically I give it uh, the difference all right so this will give the indication to uh, the agent for example uh, which direction it should go uh, in order to reach uh, the fruit uh, in order to reach the fruit all right so this is the same thing with the y I give it this I also give it uh, I calculate the distance between um, the snake head and the fruit uh, by using uh, Pythagorean Pythagoras theorem this is basic math. Uh, I save it here. Observation three. Uh, this observation, uh, this is observation two. This observation three. I calculate the angle between uh, the the head, uh, the snake's head, and the fruit. Also to give like the agent a direction, uh, an indication of which direction it should go in order to attain uh, the fruit. Uh, but um, this and this. So observation zero and one should be enough. Um, the agent should learn that it should minimize uh, this difference right here in order to uh, reach the fruit. If the difference here is zero, that means uh, we reach the fruit. Uh, here I also give it uh, the snake heads X and Y. And this is important for agent, the agent to know because uh, if the X is uh, negative than zero, that means we hit a wall. So this is important for the agent to, uh, to know uh, if we hit a wall or not otherwise it has no indication um, yeah and here this code is uh, in order to so all of this right here uh, it's um, this what I explained before it's in order to create this list so this is the code that I that I made in order to create um, the list it's, uh, it's two for loops or actually it's three for loops uh, one X Y and the other it's a general for loop um, this is just to create like I said um, the list all right so here I return the observation and then he here I return the general reward which is like 10 if you eat the fruit and negative one if you hit the wall and negative three if you um, if you collide with yourself I also give a distance reward this is not necessary but it helps the agent uh, achieve the goal faster so basically I give it uh, a word of zero uh, if it gets closer to the fruit All right so this previous distance right here is a variable that I created uh, hold on let me try and find it for you uh, alright so yeah I said previous distance equal to D and then I update D this is in or uh, the variable D is in order to like this is the new distance and this is the previous distance and it didn't get updated so it's equal to the previous distance basic uh, computer science logic 
And um, so if we're getting closer, it gets zero. If we're getting farther away from the fruits, it gets a reward of negative one. I also added a counter divided by 30. This is a very small reward, but like I want to encourage the snake to keep eating more fruit. So this is another way to that I did it, that I give it, that I compensate or like that I that I give him uh, extra reward for 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 reaching a greater score. All right, so now what's left to do is to explain the neural network itself. So I import NumPy, TensorFlow, and Keras, which are our main libraries. So we're using TensorFlow. Uh, here we have a memory size. Uh, it was set to 1,000. So 1,000 um, instances. And here we create a bunch of NumPy uh, arrays of size, memory size, with here... Uh, input dimensions. So this is our memory state memory. So as I said, state and observation space are pretty much the same thing. And the dimensions are like uh, um, a memory size by input dimensions. So here input dimensions is 31. So, so we have a bunch of arrays of 31 units. Um, and by a bunch, I mean memory size, which is uh, one to the one to 10 to the six power. So like a million. And then we have new state memory. We have an action memory, which is simply size, memory, size. Um, so yeah, these are a bunch of zeros because we just initialized them. So this is stored transition that I was talking about earlier here. We stored transitions. So all this does is, um, well, uh, we have to first find the index uh, by doing memory counter uh, modules uh, memory size. And basically what this does is uh, it just keeps the index between zero and memory size. So basically, if if the counter goes uh, beyond memory size, uh, like let's say it's a million and two, this will just return two. So the index it becomes two. If count, uh, so basically, like after every million uh, transition, we just start rewriting on the previous data. Uh, so this is just to keep like uh, a million transitions to learn on, and then after that, like. Uh, we don't want to keep all of this, so we start writing on top of. Uh, so basically, there's old data that gets deleted, and then we just um, uh, basically we we set the state and new state and reward and action equal to. Uh, no, we set um, the index elements of uh, the NumPy array of the state memory equal to the state. So basically, we just save them into. Um, the NumPy arrays that we created before. Uh, yeah, and then we increase the memory counter. Now we have sample buffer. All right, so this function, we take the minimum of memory counter and uh, memory size. Um, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And then we create a, a batch, uh, a batch um, variable, which is np.random.choice, uh, max, mem, and batch size. So basically, it takes batch size, which is 64. So there's there, there's 64 element to this uh, NumPy array, and it's 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 random um, uh, numbers that goes all the way to max memory, and then we use that um, in order to uh, filter or sample uh, our buffer, and this is just to like um, basically like take. Uh, memory from different uh, locations so that we're just not stuck to like uh, consecutive uh, 64 or like whatever the um, the batch size is um, so this is just like for example like since it's random it's just gonna take like uh, um, information from uh, all over the place and this is just to make it more uh so th this is just to like improve the learning and like uh for example like there's things that we may not notice if we just take like 64 continuous transitions but like if we kind of mix them up um uh it helps us like um helps the model um discover things that it may not have discovered otherwise and then we just simply create the dqn network simple uh sequential network uh, create two dense layer uh, and then here their FC1 dimensions. So basically they're 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 256 I believe if I'm if I remember correctly 
uh, it's not here. The batch size is 64, so that's the 64 I was talking about before. But um, yeah, it's 256, which is the neurons. So so it's a layer. All right, so this is the first layer. I also and then there's a second layer, and then there's a final layer, uh, which is also a dense layer. And these the activation functions are rectified linear, and the other one, um, uh, the output has has four neurons or an an underscore action, but this is four, and this is uh, zero, one, two, or three. So so um, that's why I was just like I was explaining before we change this uh, read input function to zero, one, two, and three, so that everything uh, works well together. Uh, we use the atom optimizer and the mean square error loss function. So we compile the model, return the model, and then uh, here we create our agent, so our agent class. We set all the parameters, epsilon decrement, epsilon end, uh, memory size. So this is the million, the one million that I was talking about. And I'll explain the epsilon end a little bit. We set all our variables. We create our memory, which is our replay buffer. And we create our QEVOL uh, variable with our build uh, DQN um, function, right, right here. Uh, we create store transitions, basically the same thing, but uh, inside this class. And here we have choose uh, action. So all right, so this is the function that uh, is right here. So we choose the action. So it's it's, it's the act. Uh, it's the function that determines. Uh, the action so it's pretty important function so basically uh, this is where epsilon comes to uh, in handy uh, epsilon basically like at the beginning uh, I think we start at 0 0.99 or something like that uh, no it's one uh, gamma 0 0.99 alright so um, so it's one all right, at the beginning it's one and then np.random.random returns a number between zero and one all right so so at the beginning um the chances of this number being smaller than one are very 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 high so that means that at the beginning when we start running our model most of our actions will be random actions because we say np the random the choice and here action space is four so we will turn zero to three so at the beginning most of them are random but then the we will start decreasing epsilon and we will start choosing action based on our uh, neural network uh, evaluations uh, instead of random actions. So this is what this does. All right. Now we have the learn function, which is um, a very, very important function. It's the function. So basically, after we do all of this, we choose the action, we get the observations and whatnot. We store transitions and everything. We learn. So this is um, uh, so. So here we have this if statement. Uh, because otherwise we get an error. We need the memory counter to be uh, uh, bigger than 64. And this is uh, related to, I think, this uh, statement right here. So basically, if memory size max mem um, is less than batch size, this returns an error. So this is why we have this right here. And then um, we sample the memory. And we create two... Um, uh, two uh, networks, so two D uh, DQN. One will be for the evaluation, and the other one uh, will be uh, to train on. So, so this is just so like we don't use the same model to, uh, to train and evaluate at the same time. We just use uh, one model um, to evaluate a bunch of times, and then after like batch batch size or like after a certain number, we we uh, update um, the model that we're using. So we have one model that we keep using to predict and another model uh, that we train. And we can't just keep training the model and predict with it at the same time because then the model is just gonna get confused. So what we do is we use one model to predict, another one to train. And uh, after a certain bunch of prediction or a certain bunch of iteration, uh, we update the training model. So the training model just um, gets updated once in a while, uh, and then we just copy the, the 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 model like the weights and biases and all the information of that model into our predicting model so that they're technically the same but they're just a little bit shifted. So here, what is what it is? We're copying uh, the model. We get batch index, and then we use this formula. All right, so Q target. Uh, with batch index and actions. 
and this is um all right so it's this equation right here and this is because we're using the mean squared error uh loss function so we need uh an actual value and a predicted value the actual value is the one that our uh neural model predict but we have uh, but we have no way to get uh, a predicted value so that's why we use this formula instead so we get uh, this is the gamma that i was talking about earlier this is the current uh at the current state and current action the current reward plus and then here we have the maximum reward in the next state so so this is just an approximation function that we just implemented right here and then we train on batch so basically we update no, we train the QE eval, and here we um, we decrease uh, the epsilon. All right, so by epsilon decrement, and then if it reaches the minimum, then we'll just set it to the minimum. So yeah, that's how uh, our uh, neural network works. And at the end, we simply print all uh, of um, well the average in the last score, but this is not really important and so that's how um, an, a computer learns how to play a uh, snake game um, in the next uh, implementation of this we'll try and like uh, make it reach a higher score make it uh, like use different implementations of of DQN and whatnot but uh, for now this is good enough so thank you for watching and uh, make sure to subscribe, uh, like the video, share it with your friends, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.